Sophia, the wisdom and spirit of God has been having some fun with me this week as I began to think about what I wanted to say this morning on this second Sunday and eighth day of Easter and on this very special second Sunday of Easter this year as we celebrate and give thanks for Margot and her life with us and her continuing life with us and the power of, of God's life. And I've been thinking about a couple of things. And then on Thursday, <clears throat> one of our wardens, Carol McKenzie, left a quilt in the office with a note that said, you might want to use this on Sunday. Well, it was, it was folded up. And so I opened it up uh, the way it was folded up. as you can see, and I thought, well, that's nice, kind of Easter eggy. <laughs> well, you know, and then as I put it down, I thought, oh, well, dummy, you're looking at the back. Um, <laughs> and when I dropped it down, I saw, as you will see as you come to receive the Eucharist, and those who are closer can already see, uh, that it is... Uh, Inside the great green diamond, it is all over tigers. And I had to laugh quite lustily because I knew Sophia was up to those wonderful tricks of hers, bringing it all together. For, the, for what I had been pondering about, at least to begin, not particularly having anything to do with the the depth of the poem, but a great line from Eliot with whom we will begin and end today. But these were lines perhaps familiar to some of you uh, from his poem, Gerontion. The word within a word, the word within a word, unable to speak a word. The word within a word, unable to speak a word, swaddled with darkness, swaddled with darkness. In the juvenescence of the year came Christ the tiger. In the juvenescence of the year, in the spring of the year, in the juvenescence of the year came Christ the tiger. The word within a word, unable to speak a word, swaddled with darkness in the juvenescence of the year came Christ the tiger. It's such a powerful image in these great 50 days of Easter. Works well for us who live north of the equator. Maybe it doesn't work so well if you live in Auckland, but you have to imagine more, you see, because down there it's in the autumn of the year came Christ the Tiger, but we won't go into that this morning. Uh, in the juvenescence of the year came Christ the Tiger, that powerful symbol, the tiger, sleek, the tiger poised, the tiger who does not waste emotion in pursuit of the tiger's role. It is such a powerful image about Christ who comes in that great Celtic tradition out of which we Anglicans come, the Christ who comes to restore, the Christ who comes revealed in the human life of Jesus, so focused so determined to give us that way to be restored again to that full wholeness that has always been ours in God's love as we have been created out of the substance of God, even as we have sometimes lost sight of that, have forgotten that we are of God's substance, and that the song which rings through all creation lives within us. But I think Margot knew that, and from the moment of her baptism, she relished in knowing and learning, as it were, about Christ the tiger and all that our tradition means. She literally ate up education for ministry, that, this extraordinary four-year program of lay formation. She loved getting into, into the real substance of Scripture the Hebrew texts and the Christian texts. She had a great joy in seeing things broken open and understood in new ways. 
She relished the idea that God is always leading us out into the future. And that we, in every age, are called to see with new vision. And she understood that deeply. She would have had a... She had some resonance with Thomas, so often maligned. She knew what it was to be certain and then not so certain, and to seek again for some assurance and conviction. But she knew that in times of doubt, as in times of surety, she was God's daughter. She had probably always known that in some deep way, but the moment that she came to the waters of baptism at the great vigil of Easter, she knew that with a new kind of meaning, a new kind of bearing within her. She grew into and understood more deeply what it means to be buried with Christ in his death and to be raised with Christ in the power of Christ's resurrection. She had a great twinkle. Lynn has alluded to that, as has Janet. The more she learned, the more the twinkle was there. She was the first one to spot heresy. Which is not hard to do in the church since the prayer book and the hymnal are full of it. But she had great fun noting how we still had a, great, a good deal of a way to go in, in the language of the church uh, to get on board where God had been leading us and is leading us. Uh, oftentimes in, the, in that unlikely realm we call the sciences, teaching us as we have come to understand a quantum universe, the real nature of relationship in creation and our relationship in God, with God, and with one another. And so we come today in sorrow and in joy, Because death is always an ending of a way we have been with someone, of a way we have known someone. A certain kind of tactileness is gone, the kind of immediacy we have known in voice, in touch, in participation. And yet, Margot understood deeply, and often revealed in her speaking, often as she shared in, this, in the Education for Ministry seminar, she'd come to understand that there is no such thing as ending. Beginning and ending are the same. She understood that great profound truth that we come from the substance of God, we journey with God, we return and are unfolded again by Sister Death into the deep richness of God's life. And so we gather this day as we always do, and especially on a day like this when we commend her to the, and anyone we love to, to God to whom she or they need no commendation. But nonetheless, something has ended. But with faith and trust and hope in God's faithfulness, that God is faithful, that even as we commit her body to the ground, God in God's wisdom has enfolded her in a new way, has brought a new and deeper richness and oneness to her, that she has been enfolded into that great fire, which is the very heart of God's life that fire symbolized by the great paschal candle presiding over us all these days of Easter. And I had to laugh just as Adele was reading the second reading because I looked up toward the Reredos and I suddenly thought, oh, that's interesting, fireworks. But I realized it was just the light at the top of the Reredos sparking out and I thought, Margot hasn't lost her sense of humor <laughs> yet. <laughs> so maybe it all gets summed up again in these words not unfamiliar to many of us from Eliot. Now from 
from the very end of the four quartets, at last, the last words of the fourth quartet, Little Gidding, calling that great experiment in, in prayer and holy living. But it says everything about our oneness, from which nothing can separate us. What we call the beginning is often the end. What we call the beginning is often the end, and to make an end is to make a beginning. The end is where we start from. The end is where we start from. Every phrase and every sentence is an end and a beginning, every poem an epitaph, and any action is a step to the block, to the fire down the sea's throat, or to an illegible stone, and that is where we start. We die with the dying, we die with the dying. See, they depart, and we go with them. We are born with the dead. See, they return and bring us with them. See, they return and bring us with them. The moment of the rose and the moment of the yew tree are of equal duration. And then T.S. Eliot draws us further and further into the mystery, finally bringing up again and raising up those great words of the great mystic woman of Norwich, Julian. We shall not cease from exploration, and at the end of all our exploring, and the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started. The end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time. Through the unknown remembered gate, through the unknown remembered gate, when the last of earth left to discover is that which was the beginning. At the source of the longest river, the voice of the hidden waterfall, and the children in the apple tree, not known because not looked for, but heard, half heard in the stillness between the waves of the sea. Quick now, here, now, always, a condition of complete simplicity, costing not less than everything. Quick now, here now, always, a condition of complete simplicity, costing not less than anything than everything, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well, when the tongues of flame are enfolded into the crowned knot of fire and the fire and the rose are one.